All right, I'm back. So let's solve part A. How do we do it? Well, we need uh, equations of motion, equations of kinematics when we have a constant acceleration, all right? So we're gonna use uh, the XY coordinate system, our usual uh, rectangular coordinates, right? X and Y. So I already used the uh, J hat here, right? J hat is the unit vector in this direction. That's J hat. And in the uh, X direction, we have the unit vector I hat. Well, you don't need these uh, to solve this problem. I just wanted to talk about it. Uh, unit vector means length equal to one. All right, I hope you remember that. All right, let's, uh, let's solve this. Can I scroll here? I cannot. So, what to do, what to do? Well, let's erase. All right, let's erase these. So we have room to work. I thought I was able to scroll it, but I guess not. Okay. All right, sorry for keeping you waiting. All right, anyways, so let's select draw again. Okay, I guess I'm gonna finish with everything in one go. All right, let's go all the way up. Okay, in the X direction, there is no acceleration, all right? So the displacement delta X will be simply equal to the initial velocity. I mean the X component of the initial velocity times uh, T. Elapsed time, all right? So the initial velocity, if we decompose it, it's to decompose it, it in, into its uh, X and Y components. V naught, it's, it's theta naught. This is V naught cosine theta naught. That's the X component. And the Y component is V naught sine theta naught. All right, so here we have only this V naught cosine theta naught T. How about the uh, displacement in the Y direction? All right, delta Y, now we do have acceleration, all right? So besides this term, V naught Y T, we need the acceleration term. That's what I call it, one half A Y T squared. All right, A Y, remember, it's a negative G, right? That's from the previous slide. Okay, so if I wanna write it explicitly, that's equal to V naught sine theta naught t minus one half g t squared. All right, so what is delta y anyways? Remember uh, the ball followed the path like this, it landed, all right? It landed a distance r away from where we kick it. Well, obviously, R is our delta X, right? That's displacement in the X direction. But what about the displacement in the Y direction? Is it H? Remember H, the height, the maximum height? Actually, it's not, because the Y coordinate changes. It increases, reaches H, and then decreases, goes back to zero. So delta Y for this problem is zero all right that is zero 
So zero is equal to then. Now I'm going to write the right hand side like this. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm going to factor t out because uh, both terms have t in them. So if you factor t out, let's factor t out, you will have the v naught sine the theta naught. Okay, I didn't mean to put the parentheses there. Let's get rid of that. All right, go back to draw again. Good. Now, what is the next term? One half minus one half g. There's t squared here, but one of the t is in here. So I only have t, close parentheses. All right, okay. So t, t times this thing here is equal to zero. If two numbers are multiplied and the answer is zero, well, one of them has to be zero, okay? And we do know that t is not zero, t is time. So then the only option is this guy here has to be equal to zero, all right? That's good, okay? It simplifies things a little bit, but we still do not know what t is, but it's okay. We have this other equation here, the delta x equation, and we can solve for t. We can solve this equation for t, and then plug that t into the second equation. So here's what we're gonna do. Delta x is r, right? Delta, maybe I said it backwards. Let's solve the other equation, this one for t, and then plug it in the first equation. So we're solving for r, remember? Okay, so r, which is delta x, is equal to, V naught cosine theta naught. All right, times t, times t. But what is t? t is the solution of this equation, okay? This equation here, let me just rewrite it. Zero equals v naught sine theta naught minus one half g t. If you solve it for t, you will get two times v naught times sine theta naught, and you're gonna divide it by g, all right? That is your t. So plug that in here. <coughs> Excuse me. Two v naught sine theta naught over g. All right, here's your answer. Actually, uh, we have the initial conditions v naught and theta naught, and g is just a constant. <coughs> so here's your r. Let's simplify it though. Um, so you have two here, sine theta and cosine theta, right? So if you remember the trigonometric identity, sin, sine theta times cosine theta times two is equal to sine two theta. I forget what it's called. Maybe it's called half angle formula or something like that. Doesn't matter what it's called. It's a really basic trigonometric identity. And we have two v naughts. So that makes v naught squared times sine two theta naught divided by g. All right. So that's good. Now we have R, but what about the maximum R? R is obviously a function of theta naught now, assuming V naught is your maximum kick power, right? That is fixed, but we can always change theta naught. So how do we find the maximum R? Or in other words, which theta, what angle makes R a maximum? 
and to find that we got to remember what the sine function looks like all right so all right this is the sine function so this is your angle call it phi some angle here's sine phi now the values this function can have vary between negative one and positive one right positive one when the angle is uh, 90 degrees when the angle is 90 degrees sine phi is one so the problem is simple right when two theta naught is equal to 90 degrees r is maximum so we gotta kick the football at 45 degrees so that r is max maximum all right now what about uh, other degrees like what if you kick it at 70 degrees you know what happens then well uh the ball will not fly that far, that's for sure. So let's say this is at 45 degrees. So if you kick the ball at 70 degrees, it's going to fall short. All right, 70 degrees. We know that. But uh, this distance now, new r, which is less than r maximum, can we get there? Uh, with some other angle other than 70 degrees okay that's a valid question and to do to find the answer to that question let's look at the form here see you have this sine times cosine so you have sine theta naught times cosine theta naught so basically we're going to have let's say sine 70 times cosine 70, right? That's what it means. So, a right angle, or I mean a right triangle, this is 70 degrees. Here is what? 20. And here is a 90 degrees. So, sine 70 means side opposite divided by hypotenuse which means side adjacent over hypotenuse for 20. So in other words, sine 70 is equal to cosine 20. Similarly, cosine 70 will be equal to sine 20. All right, so if you kick the ball at 20 degrees, it's gonna reach same distance all right and you can do it for any angle uh 50 its complementary angle is 40. so uh, that's how you find those uh, pairs of angles okay so i'm gonna stop the recording now